what, what I actually will do is, I'll, if I can scoot this back. Now, my name is Pablo, which means short. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. Want us to get music stand? Music stand would be better. I'll, I got one right here. All right, everybody that's ready to head over to Children's Church, please proceed to your classroom. Thank you. I didn't know if uh, in order to preach in, in the Circle J, if you had to meet a certain height requirement. Uh, and I really, I always appreciated the fact that I'm a, I'm a principal. And I actually uh, am a principal of a pre-K, kinder, and first grade school. So I see eye to eye with those kids. <laughs> and uh, so I always appreciated that most of the uh, podiums that they have in these schools have actually an adjustable height. So of course, you know, I would roll it down to be able to see. And uh, so last time I was here, <laughs> I did the same thing. Stood behind that thing and I couldn't see half of you. <laughs> Well, it's good to be here this morning, and one of the main things that I want to do is I want to be a mouthpiece for the Lord this morning. And so if you will bow down with me, please, bow your heads. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this wonderful morning. Morning full of life, Lord Jesus, you've given us breath to breathe, you've given us health, you've given us the opportunity to come and worship together, to fellowship together as a body, to learn from your word. And Lord Jesus, from here to go forth into our daily lives, into our daily week, Lord Father, to minister to others as you have called us to do, and to also grow in our own lives, that we may be nearing and hearing your voice every single day. I pray, Lord Jesus, for the needs of our brothers and sisters in our, in our congregation. I pray, Lord Jesus, for the community around us and the neighbors around us also. May you be with us, may you be glorified this morning, as you already are in heaven and have been in the music. Continue to lift you up, Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I bring a message to you this morning. And as I've told you, it is always my prayer that the Lord will use me as a mouthpiece. And I'm going to ask you a few questions. And I, I may do a little things or some things a little bit different. But I'm, sometimes when I ask you a question, I do want to see your hands raised up. I'm, remember, I'm used to the school business, right? So. How many of you have gone and have had this experience? You've, you and your wife or you and your family have gotten together in the car and man, you were planning to go to this nice restaurant. And so you get in the car and you drive over there, you drive up and there are no vehicles in the front and there's a closed sign on the door. How many of you have had that experience before? Some? Okay. How about this? You're down the road, you could be close to your house, possibly, getting from work, and a lot of you may be even working in Denton or even in Dallas. So you're used to driving, or you're taking a road trip, and you run out of gas, or about to run out of gas. So you see some lights, you see a gas station, and you're thinking, oh, you want to be chewed out by your wife for not filling the gas, your gas tank at the last stop. You drive up, and guess what? It's closed. How many of you had that experience? <laughs> what do you do? What do you do in those situations? And there's not a town about 15 or 20 more miles. What do you do? I don't know, have you seen that? Some, some of you may have seen that movie, uh, Wild Hogs. <laughs> you know, they do. They're planning on driving on through, but they have they ran out of gas and they have got to stay. And they suffer through it. So that's the one thing. And how many of you in this particular situation, especially us males, our wives have been pregnant and they get an urge to eat some type of food. And there's nothing open. Everything's closed. And in our case, 
We lived in a little bitty town called Booker, Texas, up in the north. This is not north. They say north Texas. This is not north. Up in the Panhandle, even though it's considered west, whoever wrote the, the regions of Texas did not know directions. <laughs> but anyway, up north, the northeasternmost corner of Texas, there's a town called Booker. And, you know, my wife and I are, are, were born in Mexico, and, and so my wife was pregnant, and she got some urges for some gorditas. Where am I going to find some gorditas? Everything's closed. So in those situations, you just wonder, you know, what am I going to do? And imagine this now. I hope this has never happened to you. But you have an emergency. You have an emergency. And you got, you drive up to a, a, a hospital. And it's closed. What do you do? What do you, you do in those situations? I mean, it's a very, very difficult situation, right? So, today, I want to make a connection, basically, to we don't want those experiences to be in our churches, in our church, and also in heaven. We don't want the closed sign stuck up here in front. And we definitely, when we look up, we do not want to see that closed sign up there. Are you in agreement? Amen. That's right. We want to have an open heaven, an open door. So today's message is called open. And we, I'm going to relate to you for several things that are in the Bible concerning uh, the talk about an open heaven. When you go to church and you're coming here, now are you seeing an open sign for yourself? Do you see an open sign that's welcoming people into our congregation? For that matter, if you can even see in our communities, are people coming in? And do they feel welcome to come in? That's something we need to ask ourselves every day. And in doing that also, <clears throat> when we come into a church, are you satisfied? Do you feel like you're getting your fill? Like going into a restaurant and really enjoying the meal. When you, when you leave a restaurant, especially a Mexican restaurant, you may remember you were in a Mexican restaurant. The main thing, though, is that you have those flavors, you've enjoyed your meal, you've savored it, and you remember it, right? Now, be honest. After you leave church, as you're eating dinner, do you remember usually the message that was preached? I hope you do. <laughs> because a lot of times, even tomorrow or Mondays, do you remember the message that was preached? I can tell you, I, I confess, there have been a lot of times that I can think in the Sunday afternoon and wonder, what did I hear this morning? What in the world did I hear? I just don't remember. And in some ways, I didn't savor. I may not have gone to church for the right reasons, or the right attitude, or with the openness in my own mind to receive a message that the Lord wanted to speak to me. Okay? So today, I want to ask at the very end, I want to, for yourselves to ask yourselves, did I remember the message today? And this afternoon, to ask yourselves, did I hear the Lord's word today? And then tomorrow, and even Wednesday or Thursday, ask yourselves, am I following up on what the message from the Lord came to me? Am I going to do what he asked me to do? Okay, so keep that in mind, and keep it in mind all through the week. All right, so here is this. Now, when you go to... Jesus, when you go to God, when you go to Him in prayer, what's the feeling that you're getting in your heart? Are you feeling that your message is being heard, that your prayers are being heard? Or do you get the message like, there's an echo, there's nobody there, I, I don't know if He's listening to me. 
I don't know if my hurt, my, my cries, my petitions, or my praises are being accepted by the Lord. Okay? I know in my life, personal life, there have been a lot of times like that. Just kind of like the seasons. A lot of times there's a dry season, and there's sometimes there's a wet season. There have been times in my life that I've cried out. I just don't know if he's absolutely listening to me because it just doesn't appear. Things go wrong in my life, and I just can't seem to see the, the light of day. And so I wonder, is, is heaven open? Is, are the windows open? Are the doors open where the Lord sees me and hears me? And the question I have to ask myself after all those experiences that I've had, and, and you know, I'm 53 years old now, and kind of thinking, well, was it God that actually didn't hear me? I have to answer, no. Looking at it from the Word actually has to do with me. What does Revelations 3.20 say? It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's not me knocking. It's Jesus knocking. He's the one that's knocking on my door. I may be going to Him in prayer, but I may not have the right attitude. I may not have the right... Uh, I may not be totally in communion with Him and all the things that I need to do and to, to be able to be in that place where I can hear clearly. And so, what do I do? What are the steps do I need to take to be able to get to God? One, there are two, two times that we're directed to Him. One is that we have that deep, deep desire to follow Him, to talk to Him, and there's also those times when there is a great need. I expressed to you the last time, uh, we have a couple, you know, you saw our little twins. I have five boys. I see you have three, Jordan, don't you? I've uh, been blessed with five boys. I have three sisters, and I thank God for my five boys. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. We adopted our set of twins. If you notice, they're... I guess I could, I could say that my hair used to look like theirs, right? <laughs> Got their blonde hair, you know, very light complexion. We adopted them when they were three weeks old. They were taken away from us for about ten days. And I didn't tell you the rest of the story last time I came to you. But during those, that, ten, those ten days, my wife would lay their clothes down on the on the bed and just cry. She cried alone. I cried alone. I had a shock. She didn't know this. But I'd go over there. I'd, I'd try to burn off a lot of energy. And I remember crying more than I ever had in my life. Because we wanted those children back. Our two boys back. They'd been with us for about a week. And they'd been taken away from us. And I'll tell you, it was worse than death. During that particular time, the Lord revealed to me something that was, it's still with me right now. And that is, He said to me, how much crying are you doing for the lost? How much crying are you doing for your neighbor right across the street or the road? How much crying are you doing for those children in your school who are suffering? How much crying have you done for these single mothers that are suffering through those in many situations? It was a time of great need for me to get my two boys back. As you can see, we did get them back, thankfully. But that thought has stayed with me. That through that time, through that great need, I was driven to pray, to reach out, 
to get to that open door or that open heaven. And the, the heavens did open up and I did receive a word. And I don't know if I would have actually seen it that clear if I hadn't gone through that situation. So sometimes the Lord does allow us to go through those difficult situations to get, get a glimpse of what He wants us to learn. The main thing, though, is that we don't want to go through those situations, do you? Or neither do I. We don't want to go have to be driven to those difficult situations to get to that open heaven. Correct? So, what does it say in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6? The Beatitudes. Listen to this, and it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. So the Lord wants us to have a hunger and a thirst for Him. And that's on a daily basis. To have a great need, a great desire to know Him. To know Him for who He is and what He is. He's our God, our Creator. To have that hunger and thirst to get into His Word, to eat of it on a daily basis, to study it, and more than anything, to live it. You do that. We do that. The doors will open up to heaven. Those windows will be rolled up. Correct? That happens because that is His will. That's what He wants. And you can look through the Bible. There are a lot of situations. And I went through and I saw. I looked up open heaven and kind of looked at through where all these men throughout our, our Bible that had an open heaven. And in those people, those men actually literally, literally heard a voice from God, an audible voice, or saw visions, or saw great things. Remember Jacob and the ladder? Right? Remember Moses up on the mountain? Do you remember that? Do you remember Ezekiel? And the experiences that he's had, and the visions that he had. You remember Isaiah? Woe is me, for I'm undone. Most of all, of course, remember Jesus when he was baptized. And the voice, audible voice, came down, basically portraying how pleased he was with his son. Do you remember Stephen? Right before he was stoned, that he saw the open heaven. And do you remember Paul on his road, the road to Damascus? And then do you remember John? Revelations. The whole world opened up to him as to the end of the ages. And there are some others, for example, like Elijah. But they saw the presence of God. They heard His voice. Now, I'm going to ask you this. How many of you have heard that audible voice? We may not have had that thundering voice, but I'm telling you, and I'm going to ask you this. Do you, does the God speak to you? Does He speak to you? He can speak to you in two ways. I truly believe this. Through, you have your Bible right in front of you, right? So He speaks to us on a daily basis through His Word. The other thing too that He does, and this is something that we a lot of times forget, but the Lord speak to us, speaks to us in an audible voice in our head. We've got to discern a lot of times on what, what those, those voices that come into our head. And we got to go back to the scriptures to discern. But I have affirmed this. I'm not better than any of you by any means. I'm just like you. I walk a daily life. I have my family. We struggle from time to time. We struggle financially from here and there. We struggle with 
issues, marital issues from time to time. You know, with our sons, we have things happen throughout our lives. With our families. With work. Just like you, every single day. And there have been times when a person has come to me there in my office. And they're struggling, having a problem. And honestly, I sense a nerve in my heart that I have to say something to that individual. Now, is that me? Is that me? No. It's the door. It's that open heaven coming through me, opening my eyes and being able to speak. The other thing, too, I want to tell you, in preparing for a sermon, for a message like this, my responsibility as a lay preacher is basically to come before you and do I come and do I just make up a message? Write down some words, bring them to you, and then ad hoc, just wing it, per se. If I did that, I'd be doing it with my own words, my own knowledge, my own discernment and wisdom. And let me tell you, there's no reason for you to remember any of this by Wednesday or Thursday or even for that matter an hour from now. But I'm humbled to tell you that the Lord gave me a word. And I'm going to go through the scripture in a moment. And then I'm going to share a promise that he's given us all that we can live with and stand on that could possibly change our lives on a daily basis. And I just stand amazed that the Lord can do that for a person like me. And He does that to you also on a daily basis. But a lot of times, like we, in our daily lives, we get accustomed to doing things on our habits, or getting up, getting dressed, going to work, dealing with our families, that we don't spend the time and to show Him that we have that hunger and thirst for Him. I'm going to direct you to Genesis chapter 28 verse 10 through 22. This is dealing with Jacob. Just a little refresher course. Remember, Jacob was, was a child of the promise. Basically, him and his brother were part of the descendants of Abraham, right? Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac had two sons, twins. And do you remember that Esau was born first, and Jacob was grabbing onto his heel as he was coming out of the womb. And so they named Jacob, Jacob, which means basically trickster. Is that not right? So it's kind of prophetic. Well, Jacob tricked his older brother in some ways. Esau was willing to give up his birthright for a bowl of beans. But Jacob took advantage of it and took that birthright. Isaac blessed him. Blessed him with all the things that the Lord had for him. And out of that trickery, Esau was after his brother. He was only going to wait till his dad Isaac died before and he, after that he was going to go and kill Jacob, his brother, because of this issue. So Jacob at this time is in a time of the great distress and he's traveling. Okay, He's getting out and the, the, uh, basically his excuse was, Dad, I'm going to go away, I'm going to find myself a wife you know, from my relatives. So he travels away, and on his way, he stops at a place, and he goes to sleep. And in verse it says, Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went, went toward Haran. Okay, I'm going to skip down. He went to sleep, and then put a rock in his uh, head, and on verse 12, and he says, And he had a dream, and behold, 
a ladder was set on the earth with its top, reaching to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were descending and ascending on it. So in this dream, he basically saw a ladder reaching up to heaven. So could you imagine the height of that? But not only that, he saw angels going up and down in, on that ladder. And behold, on verse 13, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. Verse 14, your descendants shall also be like dust on the earth, and you shall spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and in your descendants shall all the families on the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. So, let me ask you this. Where are you right now? Where are you? Do you have a time, do you have a great distress in your life right now? Maybe with a sickness. Maybe with, with uh, family problems. Work-related problems. If you have those great distresses in your life, we can go to God. We can go to Him. Call upon Him. He will answer us. He desires for us to do one thing. And that is to seek Him in the good in the good times and in the bad times. The answer, the question is actually, am I hearing from Him? Well, He is listening to you. Like I told you a little bit earlier, whenever the heavens seem closed, the point is, is that those heavens, those doors are open and those windows are open and those blessings are ready to be showered down upon you. We just need to change our hearts. We need to seek Him. We need to look for Him. And how do we do that? And this is the challenge that I have for all of you this week. And this is the one thing that I want you to remember. And I'm going to do it with a question. How much time are you spending with the Lord to solely do one thing? And that is to worship Him. How much time a day are you spending on worshiping Him? A moment ago I went through the list of those prophets of old. And whenever the, the audible voice came, many of those situations, you know, like for example, Jacob, he was by himself. Ezekiel, was by himself. Elijah was by himself. Moses, the majority of the time, was by himself. Jesus, most of the time, was by himself. John was by himself. Paul, a lot of the times that the Lord spoke to him, was by himself. There were a lot of times, there were few examples in there when it was public in a crowd. But the question is, are you putting yourself in that situation every single day, whether it's in that prayer closet or whether you're getting up at 15 minutes or 30 minutes before your spouse or your family and getting into that living room, whether it be dining room, wherever it is, whether it's on your knees, on your face, sitting down or standing up, at least 15 minutes a day doing nothing but praising and worshiping God. Answer that question to yourself. If you're not, then if you do do it, you're going to start 
your heart is going to start yearning, hungering, thirsting for His presence. Because that's whenever He shows up. He shows up in your life. He reveals to you. Have the Word right there with you. You can pick out a scripture or one of the Psalms and read it to Him. Praise Him. Worship Him. And I'm telling you, He will start pouring His Spirit upon you. And it gives me chills because you will start experiencing Him for who He is. Listen to what He promises you. Now here, Jacob was told of the Abraham, Abrahamic, what is it? Abrahamic covenant. Basically, the promises that God had made to Abraham, He was going to fulfill through His lineage. But I believe strongly Listen to this. That what he is saying also here to us is that we worship him. We hunger and thirst after him. That's God, our Lord Jesus. His Holy Spirit will come and he will give you the blessings that he asks. One is, angels will start ministering to you and through you. The other one is that He will possess the land. You will possess the land. The other thing about this is that your descendants, your descendants, your example, will create further Christians down the road. And they will in turn produce and have more children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren that will be followers of Jesus. That will also be proclaiming His Word. Just like He said, as the number of the, of the, the uh, little grains of sand, so will your descendants be. We have that same promise for us if we follow Him. The other big thing here is this. It says this, all peoples will be blessed. Now He's talking about Jesus. Down the road, that all of us would be able to come and be adopted into God's king, king, kingdom. But the thing is, listen to this, is that if we follow Jesus, if we're hungry and chasing after Him, He will provide the Helper, the Holy Spirit, to open up our eyes and see the people around us. See the need right there. See the need over there. See the little child over there that needs to be taken to Sunday school. He sees that person that needs to be fed. My wife this last week told me of a, of a couple that we had an acquaintance with in El Paso. They had ministry in Juarez at the time. They were missionaries. But they live in Houston. He does very well. The Lord has blessed him with a great job. But you know what they do? They're providing Basically, for people with have no home, they're struggling financially, they're struggling physically, they're providing them a home to stay in. They furnish and decorate their home. And you should see those faces of those people when they go in and enter those houses. Just a blessing. So just think about this. The peoples will be blessed. So you share Christ with them, they will be changed and blessed forever. So, I want you to desire it as a church to be able to come and share with each other all the great things that the Lord is doing to us through, through our daily lives. So seek Him daily. Spend at least 15 minutes to worship Him. And remember even the Lord's Prayer starts off, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. It even starts there. Worshiping Him is the most important thing. And from there, see the heavens open up 
and receive the Lord's blessings. May you have a wonderful week. Be blessed. Thank you.